Hey guys, it's the Market Sniper. Short form update on a bit of a fundamental concept. And it revolves around the article that I will be showing you in a few moments uh, on the US and Europe to some degree eyeing Russian assets to aid Ukraine to fund its war. That's right. Uh, to be clear, I'm referring to $300 billion. This is not small money. This is $300 billion that Russians kept in US treasuries that were initially just frozen. Okay, there's an uncool situation. We are freezing your assets. Usually in these situations, things mitigate, they resolve, some degree of compliance takes place, somebody gets their money back. Um, what is actually happening here um, is in actual fact, that wasn't a freeze of assets. It's a full blown confiscation of assets. And now potentially a utilization of those same assets to fund and weaponize an enemy against Russia. So it's almost like not only did you not score a goal, the ball was taken away from you and given to the other team to score a goal. There's a two goal swing, the loss of your assets and the fact that it's now actually being given uh, extra use potentially to be used against you in terms of you have to spend other money and lives and human capital as well as financial capital to resist this new uh, attack vector that you yourself have funded against yourself. So I want to um, make a couple of interesting points. So there was a bill where they, the Democrats tried to lump everything in together, including uh, 10 billion for Israel, uh, 60 billion for Ukraine. And uh, that way they were trying to push the Ukraine through because everybody knows the entire you can't be BDS, APAC, Senate will vote all the aid and financials that uh, Israel wants. Uh, that no one would want to vote against Israel. They would also look the other way and sign for Ukraine too. Uh, but what actually ended up happening politically is that that bill did not pass and uh, they had to be separated uh, and funding has been provided uh, for Israel. I think by executive order, by Blinken no less, uh, with uh, the shaky Jake that happens to be the masquerading man of teleprompter reading for America Biden, largely being kind of kept in the loop about what was being done on his behalf. Um, so you end up with the fact that Ukraine has actually run out of money. They've run out of arms. They've run out of everything. They've been losing the war. They're trying to maintain this drip, drip, drip arm wrestle of exhaustion on Russia's uh, resources. And Russia has done just enough to keep them busy and largely win it and dominate it and pin them down and not allow them to do too much destructive to the Russian citizens that are in the east of Ukraine. So let's go to the article um, that takes us into this incredibly dangerous tactic that the American uh, government is considering. So here it is. Um, this is no less than the New York Times. You can imagine the spin on it there. Um, US and Europe, I, I like the way how Europe was dragged into this. I'm not so sure that it was their big ass idea and how excited they are about it. Um, I would like to think there's a bit more wisdom there, but uh, nonetheless, maybe, you know, certain the likes of Tony Blair and other weaponized Zionists in the political system throughout, which uh, it doesn't matter whether you're conservative or labor at the moment, they're all friends of Israel. That That's a club, by the way, um, not a phrase meaning they're a friend. It's they're part of a group called Friends of Israel, as Bo Boris Johnson himself was. And if you and if you want to become uh, politically powerful, you almost invariably have to, as is Cameron. Uh, and Cameron, by the way, just while we sidebarring on that, um, was busy say, saying how uh, entitled Israel was to defend itself from the heinous attack. So you kind of get the pitch that you're going to get politically out of anyone in Britain. Now, Europe is not Britain. Um, it's a lot more than that. But I'm just giving you a couple of banners uh, that have come out uh, ready other sources. Anyway, let's read this article. Despite legal reservations, they're not concerned with legal reservations. Don't forget the Dodds Frank the elimination of that so that Citigroup could buy travelers and casino could be married again to uh, retail banking. 
Don't forget all of those laws that were kind of inconvenient and were introduced to protect you that all slowly got repealed. Common sense and the rule of law is being 100% undermined in America. Its rule of law rating should in fact be absolutely collapsing and that my friend should be having an absolutely material fact on the attraction of owning treasuries as a safe investment class. That is why um, the Treasury of Russia, uh, a lady, by the way, also has 25% of their assets in gold held in Russia. And boy, doesn't she wish that 300 billion had also been spent on gold. And how much do you think she might buy treasuries again? Well, Russia will probably never. But what do you think China sees as a template for conduct by this? This is absolutely politicized. The Speaker of the House is doing it. Of course, Yellen, who was supposed to be a political treasury head, that is now the Democrats' uh, treasury um, secretary, uh, is, is bending her head all, trying to sound like the initially cautious concern slowly coming round um, because they don't want to fund. They don't want to fund another 60 billion. It's a hard sell. Their senators even asking, mm, how badly do we want this? Well, Ukraine is actually upper Israel run by a Zionist, so they should view it very much in the same light, but it doesn't have the same tag as Israel to the people. And it's also an older story that has been getting very stale. The news is getting out that it's good money thrown after bad. Never mind all the money laundering, all the organ... Uh, trafficking that is going on uh, and everything else that has been associated with what is a filthy situation and is largely seen as stripping capital from the citizens, adding it to the debt pile that will no doubt be written off in a reset and enrichment through contracts for political parties. Uh, the Hunter Biden uh, laptop done immense damage uh, to general expediency uh, and degree of perceived corruption of the political classes of the likes of Nancy Pelosi, uh, Biden, uh, Obama, etc. Uh, and all the other parts in there. By the way, uh, I don't think it would be much better just in different form. So I'm not uh, vouching for any one party on this side. Um, anyway, despite that, the key point here is what happens to U.S. Treasuries as an asset class once they do this and actually take some of these funds? So they will sell these assets, turn it into dollars, send those dollars to or utilize those dollars to buy from their friends in the military industrial complex with a nice friendly handshake and the extra little lump on and the kickbacks and everything that happens. So by actually they will get politicians and contract negotiators and dark state operatives will get a further fat vein for slush funds for themselves for making out like gangsters uh, and some arms will be sent but probably not to the full value of whatever gets taken. It's not to say they'll use all 300 billion that in one hit. Uh, they were looking for 60. If they gave him 30 or 40 billion, or maybe even he's requested for 60 until the next time when more is needed and all the press gangs have given up. Every male is either fighting or part of the press gangs getting other males into the army and they start sending uh, uh, female Ukrainian soldiers uh, to fight. Um, so what happens to the US Treasury market in lieu of that? As I keep saying, we've actually interviewed um, the state of the rule of law and I'm really frustrated. I'm not remembering the guest who it was I spoke to. One of you write down the comments. You'll remember that this is my bad prep um, who's, who's been stating quite clearly for an extended period well before this article that the rule of law and the nature of typical enforcement the only people that face enforcement is you for any or small crimes the big crimes go unenforced uh, and the the law rule of law does not apply in america anymore the way it might have done and this is the end of empire this is uh, undoubtedly a major, major damage to the uh, treasury market. And I want to then tie this damage to the treasury market 
to everybody's expectations. And even I was listening to um, Jim Rykards on Daniela Camboni's show uh, about, you know, it's definitely peak rates and we're going into cuts and that's why gold will do well. No, gold's going to do well. And I agree with most of what Jim says. He's a very interesting guy. And most of what he says is more accurate. I can align, but he's not right on this. The reason people will buy gold is for capital preservation causes in a collapse environment so that they hold physically something themselves that retains value in an environment where all else is losing value and has been proliferated. So more debt and now stealing other people's assets to fund pet projects of corruption and kickbacks uh, and maintain an attack vector to tie up resources of Russia are indeed a very, very spurious, spurious line of activities, a very, very contemptible line of activities and absolutely undermines the rule of law. If I have money and you want to retain it, it has to be an agnostic system. Your worst enemy has money in that bank and you're the bank owner. You cannot take it. Otherwise, confidence in the bank changes because then what happens to everybody else that I might have a grudge with uh, at some later point? Uh, how do they feel about banking with me? So the market is absolutely being undermined. The treasury market is being undermined as a status quo place of law and um, uh, asset holders um, property rights are being completely undermined. It is not a popularity contest. It should be an aspect of complete and utter principle that it is somebody else's asset. And as a result, um, it should belong to them. And the disposal thereof for other pet projects is in fact theft. It is orchestrated theft. And once you've begun stealing from those that have deposited with you, you will deserve the outcome of loss of trust. Any of the other BRIC nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, um, South Africa should absolutely be observing this. Uh, South Africa has brought a legal case against Israel for genocide. Imagine the, the Zio captured Senate there and all of them saying, well, South Africa has X number of treasuries. That money can be seized and given to Israel aid uh, to defend for their rights to defend themselves, flattening a few schools and hospitals, etc. in the name of defense. So it's very, very difficult to see that this is a new advancement in the YouTube that we did with the guest whose uh, name I will, uh, one of you will put in the comments and I apologize. Um, I wasn't thinking of mentioning him and then it came into my head. Um, who's absolutely spot on on the decay of rule of law. And it's now directly being applied to the treasury market. So everybody is sitting here and even Jim, the rates are going to go down. It's definitely the top of the rate cycle. It's all about a cut um, and how many they're going to be getting. And the bank's already priced in X amount and by March or whatever the case may be. I don't care what those guys price in. They've got everything wrong. They never saw the end of the debt bubble. They never saw the spike of rates coming as fast and as furious as they came. They never saw the oil crash that we called. They never saw any of that. Who is going to be this new buyer of debt as the rule of law and aggressive confiscation and BDIs are which treat assets that are held in treasuries as potential capital for pet projects as they run out of deficits and can't get agreement in locked uh, Senate, who is going to be the beneficiary of this? Do you think that treasury market is going to go up in value? Because when you start calling for cuts, you are assuming that the Federal Reserve has all power over rates. This is my other big pet peeve. They have power over rates when they announce a cut by decree. But eventually the market can cease to price that. And how does that happen? Even though you're cutting the rates, implying a capital gain, 
everybody who can will sell into any strength and the rates on the bond markets won't reduce by the degree you cut them only a small part thereof because any sign of strength those that have been overcommitted, and we've done a video on pensions uh, and how the assets have underperformed we and how they have to now chase far higher risk uh, and bigger growth uh, pension funds to meet their obligations do you think they're all going to sit on that one little pullback in yields uh, which will actually mean a little bounce in strength after going down a little rally and say that's it debt is saved it only goes up in capital value from here no many of them are going to be reallocating to higher risk assets to chase a greater yield and the concerns about the turn in the debt cycle uh, will be far more critically perceived following the steep rate of interest rate hikes that took an immense amount of rate hikes for a sustained and very abrupt climb in the curve to actually get to the point where uh, they somewhat contained inflation on the bank of the Bureau of Labor uh, Statistics, the BLS. Um, um, and that is not a place to be trusted. So your inflation rate is still high, higher than they state. It is also on top of compared to a year ago a very high localized high watermark number once you go into next year where we haven't climbed as much and you get any minor move in the likes of energies oils or anything else you are going to face or soft products uh, agri agris etc you are going to face real new moves in inflation after a relatively flat year on the bls stats so the notion that treasuries are going to continue to represent a great uh, buy here is foolhardy. And I want to highlight how uh, the rates coming down came down, down, down. In fact, let's go to our favorite color, TG Pink. Uh, after the run that we said it would make, 5%, that was our call. We gave you that on this channel. This is the US 30 year yield on the daily chart. Since everybody's been talking all pivot, this is the continuation pattern of what was a bullish trend upwards. Trends continue upwards until an equal or larger force completely in opposition comes in. It will take chronic disinflation, which will probably mean bank failure. Remember, banks are the intermediaries of debt. They are the pawn shops that provide that particular con uh, product line uh, and are deeply deeply compromised you had your first wave of bank failures and you often get a bit of a pause this was something jim was also highlighting you the crises come in phases you get oh we got some banks on the periphery went down never mind they've been bought off recapitalized first phase largely gone and forgotten you know we're talking about uh, the second and third largest bank failures and that largely people aren't even talking about it anymore. It was exactly how subprime happened. You had a major burst in subprime in 07 and then it took an there was a lull for an extended period until Lehman's happened uh, substantially later in 2008 and then that was like oh my god these are multiple stages to collapse. So you either go into full reset and collapse. And can I tell you, that's not going to make American debt super high valued. Yes, you could get rate cuts to stimulate, but at some point the market will say no must. And the Fed knows this. This is why the central bank uh, um, head for the Bank of England, the Bank um, of uh, the Fed, and a number of other European nations have said, the ECB, have said that people's expectations for cuts are far higher and larger than they are likely to be. They keep pointing to cause inflation. The real reason is the issuance of new debt. For rates to go down, you have to be big buyers, strong demand, running up the bid and offer ladder on the debt. No one talks about this half of the equation. 
everybody is inflation focused. Why? Because that's a statistic that can be manipulated and is being uh, manipulated. And they think reductions in inflation will bring the central bank to cut rates to save a weakening economy. And as the economy get weakening, they will cut. They may get a couple of cuts through, but they will not be able to orchestrate the buying of a treasury market that is no longer trusted, that the rule of law has gone away. How many central banks, who do you think is the big buyers? Pension funds, central banks, major institutions. How are institutions in other foreign countries? such as Japan or in the BRIC nations, big banks, big multinational corporations that are housed in Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. How are they going to justify buying into an asset class where the funds were first frozen, then stolen and then turned into slush funding for a pet project to wage war against the original owner of the bloody asset? Think about what I just said. Do I need to say it again? Are you buying an asset that someone else, an enemy, and you're putting it with him and he's going to give it to your biggest enemy who's going to buy guns and ammo and ambush your family? Are you putting your money with that bank, with that guy? Are you like hell? And that's what's happening. The collapse of the rule of law should be reflected far higher in the yields required to be uh, an owner of a US Treasury because it is turning into an arm behind your back that can be twisted at any time and forfeiture of the asset could occur if you ever did something that that country considered not in their interests, never mind if it was for your interests. How badly do you want to enter into a banking relationship with a bank that says we're not going to take your money and we're going to send it as a loan, a free interest free, in fact, a gift to your enemy to you to weaponize against you because we don't agree with the things you say on YouTube or how you talk to your friends. And we've got your devices, recordings of the things you say. And uh, we are on the other side of the political offense. Can you even imagine a set of circumstances like that? How are you going to even invest in such an institution? You would not. In fact, you would grab something that you can hold, that you can control, and that always holds value in fiat devaluation times. That, my friends, is gold. And in time, it will be silver too. Uh, and this notion of a sustained top in rates that we won't go higher and that we're going to have a long now unwinding cycle is foolhardy. Although I expect a demand destroying event, there will be some potential cuts only to a point. It will disappoint everybody by how far it will be well less than all the bankers are pricing in and the resulting action will lead to a new high in rates by prediction from me that will be required on the basis of a collapsing debt market and an absence of buyer, which will see probably the Federal Reserve and other central banks being the primary buyers of their own debt issuance. Rule of law, loss of confidence does not point to increased valuations in debt instruments, especially where those same debt instruments are being confiscated that were held in good faith in a system from a, a nation state for which you've elected to initiate aggression towards and then claim they started a war. Um, it is unfathomable and the demand, uh, the central bank institutional and the offshore demand will be divided by the BRICS, uh, will be reduced by the BRICS nation's uh, uh, rejection of purchasing treasury instruments and institutions will follow particularly eventually domestic markets will be the primary market uh, as even European nations will be somewhat circumspect uh, friend today, maybe not friend tomorrow um, about their holdings in the Treasury. And it'll come down to Japan, Britain and America uh, and a handful of Europeans in a rather nervous manner, not looking to add and occasionally slipping for the door. This is a take I wanted to deliver you. And this is my perpetual um, war that I continually are fighting. Everybody talks about 
in what will the Fed do and what the inflation rate will do. That is one side of the seesaw. What will the demand for the underlying asset do? In an event of all these things, reduction of rule of law, confiscation of assets, regardless of legal precedent, just because by voting uh, and deciding it's expedient, funding projects that actively wage uh, war against the original owner. I mean, if that's not to add additional malice to the equation, this is huge. This is undermining the treasury markets. The cuts will be less than everybody think. The disinflation could be huge, but the demand for treasuries is going to never be the same again. And the long-term outcome is a collapse in valuation, which actually is a spike in yields and a major loss of value that will see write downs. And in that process, the entire banking system will fail. And the current politicians that are doing expedient actions for today are actually not through incompetence, but through guidance, intentionally breaking the system. Everybody thinks they're far smarter than the people and saying they're so stupid. Can't they see they're going to undermine the, the confidence? They're just uh, incompetent. No, the people guiding them to do that intend to break the system and want to steal all they can. This is the last days of plunder. There is a handover from an old system to a new and all the hands know they will not be held to account for anything they steal. The normal rules of being caught and criminalized and rule of law do not apply. This is an open system now for theft and corruption. Plunder is the game. Plunder is the game. All will be written off in the whole bad debts. Oh, it all went down and it collapsed. Now we need new system start again. This is real corruption and the treasury market is rather in the longer term will make a new high by my prediction well beyond the 5.2 and actually the cuts that will perceived that may come as a as a result of disinflationary events will be less than you imagine and will be shorter than the, the is currently priced into the markets and the next major move is more likely to be a higher high the next major move so yes we can go down yes we can go down uh, to a certain level, but uh, beyond that, the only way is up. Reasons, a glut, reduced tax take, massive interest rate payments need to be monetized. They don't have it. Uh, it's bigger than the defense budget. Pensions don't have uh, the money anymore. Bankruptcy, uh, the whole debt system is in failure. Banks, the intermediators of debt will fail. The entire system of a down is not one of hyper valuation for bonds. It's one of collapse for bonds. In other words, the rates go the wrong way. You won't be able to attract people into the assets class uh, unless the rates go substantially higher, especially given the additional new risks of the collapse of the rule of law. That is what I have said. I've said it a few times now in a number of different ways. Uh, I feel that this is an under factored aspect to the treasury markets. Understanding this is a debt based system collapse. Inflation is not it's not about inflation. They keep you focusing on inflation. It is a debt based collapse. That means the currency is being devalued at an escalating rate. That is your inflation. The inflation is a symptom of a debt based currency collapse. A debt based currency collapse with high proliferation, which continues to undermine the value of the dollar unit being replicated by all the other lepers in the same leper colony. So you don't see uh, one currency major failing. You've actually got them all doing the same thing. So relatively, they're maintaining a relative valuation whilst perpetuating the same crime. So they all look like criminals. You don't know what an innocent person looks like. They all look the same. So it's difficult to spot but it is a debt based system collapse. That is why you have inflation because the currency fails with the debt. 
The money is borrowed into existence. As more money gets borrowed into existence, the proliferation gets larger. You can keep cutting the cake into ever more slices, but the thickness of the slice gets smaller. In other words, its value compared to what it was before as you proliferate goes down. This causes inflation even in items that have technological advances, which have become more efficient and better at doing it that are naturally disinflationary, like commoditization. Soft commodities, we got better at farming, less people can run bigger farms, they've scaled up and it's now a marginal business. They're barely making money, the supermarket chains are the control structure, the bottleneck in that, that take the bulk of the profits. Um, and those commoditized items are now even going up in value. Hence why we've had runs in softs, such as live feeder cattle, sugar, and many other uh, soft markets that have gone up. And it is not the fact that it's hard to farm um, or there's shortages or there's droughts. It's the fact that the currency unit required of efforts because of the proliferation in a debt proliferation failing system, which is fiat destruction. That is your inflation. Inflation is the symptom. Get to the cause. The cause is the cancer right there at the top of the pyramid. Debt based failure. Debt based failure. Debt based failure does not see debt valuations be a great bet. And if too many people think you're going to have too big a cuts, they start to think I should be buying the T-bill. I should be buying this. That is like buying a ticket on the Titanic when it's already smashed in two and the one half of the hull is going up and the other half is going down. And you say, isn't it nice this market's going up? Uh, and you, you're not listening to the fact that the, even the band stopped playing. They're just hopping bubbles along with the fish. Uh, and that's where we are, guys. Anyway, thought I'd give you a little update for you to ponder on the Sunday session uh, that you'll be facing. We are very focused on the primary cause T-bills in this death of system where suddenly any major big bank could walk in and announce JP Morgan could walk in the end of January and say we're bankrupt. And that would trigger and the Fed would go, oh, we can't bail them. They're too big and all the banks fail and we could have lights out, power out, um, cell phones down, Internet down, ATMs down, all the big shock and horror hacked by the Chinese. And next thing you know, you're having a new system that is further advanced than you thought because you thought this is never really going to happen. You kind of think it's possible that it happens, but it'll always be a year away. It'll always be 18 months until it isn't. And then boom, all your money in your bank is gone, the debt valuations have gone, the interest rates are spikes, you have huge currency volatility, and you get ready for the problem, the full reaction, and the subsequent solution. Uh, and that's what I've been uh, here talking about. Debt markets will disappoint is as a valuation to a point of losing value that will call time probably before it hits zero, you'll be in full reset. The rate cuts will disappoint on the downside. And in the longer material term, the interest rate spike is the only way as the devaluation. And as we've highlighted, the loss of rule of law, the loss of principle of any form of principle of valid agnostic system is washed away. It is killing the demand, the offshore demand across the board, including institutions. Till next time, catch you later. Give us a like, book a call. First link in the bottom. We'll see you then. Bye for now.